Dear students, in this screencast video lecture, we will try to see the points related to hydrogen as a nutrient there inside the cells. Hydrogen is present in the form of water and it is an important element that have been present in most of the organic cell constituents. It performs overlapping roles in the biochemistry of cells. Say for example, they helps in maintaining pH that is they play a buffering action there in the cell and hydrogen plays an important role there in the hydrogen bond formation between the different molecules of the cell. The main source of hydrogen for the biosynthetic purposes especially for the carbon fixation in autotrophic organism arises from NADPH that is nicotine adenine dinucleotide phosphate in a reduced form. H stands there for the reduced form. So this is particularly required for the reduction of carbon dioxide. So in photo and hemoautotrophic organism hydrogen equivalents are used there for the carbon dioxide reduction that is in the form of a NADPH. They can originate from water or from the oxidation of reduced inorganic compounds such as hydrogen sulfide or from reduced organic compounds such as acetate. Whereas hemoheterotrophic organism obtain their reducing equivalents that is the hydrogen from the oxidation of their primary carbon substrate itself. The next important element which we are going to see is oxygen. You all may aware that oxygen is very important there for the respiration of all the organisms. Along with carbon and hydrogen, oxygen is an element that have been omnipresently present in cells. Oxygen makes about 20 percentage there in the atmosphere, 20 to 21 percentage and it also common component in most of the inorganic salts that have been used there in the media preparation. Inside the cells, oxygen is present mostly in the organic components of the cell material. The main sources of oxygen for the biosynthesis of the various molecules inside the cell arises from water. It is commonly obtained as a molecular oxygen. All the organisms require this except the obligate anaerobic organism for which oxygen is really a toxic molecule. Oxygen may also be obtained less obviously that is not in common from carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. In the aerobic organism during the course of metabolism oxygen is introduced into the organic molecule through two enzymes. One is a monooxygenase as well as the other one is dioxygenase. In addition to its function as a cellular constituents, oxygen mainly serve as a terminal electron acceptor in the aerobic groups of organisms. The next important element and their role in the cell system is magnesium. It is one of the major cations present there in the cells. Its intracellular concentration is proportional to that of the RNA content of the cells which suggests that it play partly in counterbalancing effect on the negative charges of the phosphate molecule in the nucleic acids. Because of this reason, its cellular concentration and requirement usually increases with the growth rate of the cells. The next point is it is commonly required for stabilizing the structure of the ribosomes that is by maintaining the large and small subunit structures of the ribosomes into intact. Many enzymes are activated or require magnesium for their activity. These enzymes that are catalyzing reactions depend on ATP and chlorophylls are commonly require magnesium for their activity. And final point is it is required for the stability there in the cell wall as well as cell membrane. Mainly they play a stabilizing role along with the other cations available there in the cells. The next element which we are going to see in detail is potassium. It makes about the large part of inorganic cations there in the biomass. Only a small fraction of potassium is present in the cells that have been associated there with the binding site of high affinity and specificity of the enzymes. Under some conditions, this specificity or affinity may be mediated by other monovalent cations also. For example, look at this periodic view of chemical elements. 
you can able to see that the potassium is marked there together with rubidium that is both are monovalent cation in the absence of potassium its role can be carried out by the rubidium a large fraction of potassium is bound to ribosome where it seems to play a stabilizing function which is similar to that of the magnesium its requirement therefore increases along with the specific growth rate significant amounts of potassium were found associated there with the cell wall potassium activates a number of different enzymes there in the cell system both non specifically that is by contributing to the ionic strength of that particular enzyme systems are specifically in certain enzymes such as a peptidyl transferase next we look at the points related to iron one of the major micronutrient or micro element present there in the cell system it is commonly considered as a trace element and it is significantly required in all groups of organism except lactobacillus it is a only bacteria that may not required iron for their growth iron is associated there with the catalytic center of different numbers of enzymes that are being mainly involved in the redox reactions there inside the cell the various iron containing enzymes are cytochromes that have been associated there with the respiratory chains and even the flavoproteins are other enzymes that have been involved there in the detoxification of the reactive oxygen species these enzymes are catalase and superoxide dismutase so these are the group of enzymes in which iron plays an important role most of the bacteria require an iron concentration of exceeding 10 power 8 mole per liter for their growth the form of iron that have been available there in the environment is ferric that is fe3 mainly in the aerobic environment this ferric form can easily converted into insoluble hydroxides or other complexes that may lead to poor availability of iron there in the environment therefore microorganism as well as other higher organism even such as plants have evolved certain mechanism for acquisition of iron so these organism react to the iron limitation by excreting certain iron complexing organic compounds that are referred as a sidrophore that bind with high affinity towards iron that is they bind to ferric form of iron and it has been taken inside the cell and used by the cell next we look at an explanation about how sidrophores are associated there with the cell in the iron uptake sidrophores are low molecular weight compound that is between 600 to 1500 dalton in size they show high affinity for iron that is they aid in iron nutrition in the microorganism apart from microbes plants were also found to excrete the sidrophores mostly in microorganism they are produced by gram negative bacteria commonly two classes of sidrophores have been recognized one is a hydroximate type another one is a phenolate type and apart from that certain catechulate and even peptide compounds can be associated there as a sidrophore molecules if you look at in the right hand side diagram you can able to see how a sidrophore for example hydroximate type sidrophore is acquiring the iron that is ferric form of iron from the aerobic environment then how it has been transported inside the cell and it has been reduced into ferrous iron so in short sidrophores are produced by the cell and excreted under the iron limiting condition they bind to the ferric ion strongly further the iron sidrophore that is hydroximate complex is passed inside the cell it is recognized by an outer membrane receptor protein which helps in taking up the sidrophore inside the cell this protein examples are ferric enterobactin ferric chrome ferric citrate these are all the different kinds of outer membrane receptor protein that have been involved there in the transport of the sidrophores further the iron sidrophore complex is transported inside the cell membrane with the help of primary active transport system that is abc type transport system that have been embedded there in the cytoplasmic membrane subsequently in the cytoplasm the ferric ion can be reduced into ferrous form and it can be used by the cells thus ferrous form loses the affinity for the sidrophore and utilized by the cell so when ferrous form is losing the affinity the hydroxamate sidrophore can be again recycled and it will again start the new cycle of iron acquisition 
next in short we will try to look at the importance of the other trace element there in the cell system the first one is a boron it is used as an auto inducer there in the quorum sensing system in the bacteria and they are also found associated with the polyketide group of antibiotics next one is a cobalt which is importantly required for the biosynthesis of vitamin b12 and they are all involved there in the trans carboxylase reactions mainly in the propionic acid group of bacteria the next one is a copper it is involved there in the respiration related enzymes such as cytochrome c oxidase and it is involved there in photosynthesis also in the formation of plastocyanin and in certain superoxide dismutases the next one is iron we have already seen iron can be acquired from the environment with the help of special kind of organic compound called hydrophores when it is taken inside it has been used there in various enzymes such as cytochromes catalases peroxidases and even iron sulfur proteins oxygenases and in most of the nitrogenases iron plays a major role the next one is manganese it's a activator of many enzyme and it's a component of certain superoxide dismutase enzyme and it plays a major role in the water splitting enzyme of the oxygenic phototrophic group of organism mainly during the operation of the photosystem 2 the next one is a molybdenum certain flavin containing enzymes and some nitrogenases and nitrate reductases and sulfate oxidases found to have the molybdenum they are also associated there with the dimethyl sulfoxide and trimethylamine amino reductases enzymes and certain formic dehydrogenases enzymes most of these trace elements were been associated there with the enzymes of the cell system the next one is nickel mostly found in the hydrogenases and also in the coenzyme 430 that have been associated particularly or specifically with the methanogens and they are also involved in the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase as well as urease activity selenium selenium is a nutrient which is essentially required for synthesis of the two amino acid that is selenocysteine and selenomethionine apart from that they play role on the formic dehydrogenase activity as well as the hydrogenases activity tungsten they have been found associated with the formic dehydrogenases oxo transferases of certain hypothermophilic group of organisms the next one is vanadium which is required there for the nitrogenase that is in the absence of molybdenum vanadium may have a substitutional role there in the activation of the nitrogenase apart from that they are also associated with the bromo peroxidase enzyme zinc is a important micro element that have been found associated with all the six classes of enzymes it plays a major role in the carbonic anhydrase enzyme and even in the nucleic acid polymerase enzyme and they are found associated with the formation of dna binding proteins or dna finger proteins finally we look at some points related to the growth factors first important growth factor that is para amino benzoic acid is required as a precursor for the folic acid synthesis next one folic acid folic acid is mainly required for one carbon metabolism they play role in the methyl transfer reactions next are the group of b vitamins that is biotin b12 b1 b6 nicotinic acid we look at the point related nicotinic acid it is a precursor for nad that is nicotine adenine dinucleotide which can be present in a oxidized form that is nad and reduced to form nadh they play important role in the transfer of electrons in the electron transport chain that is the reason nicotinic acid is one of the important b vitamin required for the cells activity apart from that riboflavin is required for the precursor of fmn that is flavin mononucleotide and fad flavin adenine dinucleotide then pantothenic acid which is required as a precursor for the coenzyme a synthesis and lipoic acid is required for the decarboxylation of pyruvate as well as alpha ketoglutarate and vitamin k is associated with electron transport next one is a coenzyme m which is an important coenzyme there in the methane generating bacteria that is in the methanogen and the last one is coenzyme a which is involved there in the synthesis and oxidation of the fatty acids